everybody and welcome to another episode of our Do It On Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas, this is Jerome Bonnier, our foil designer. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite pieces of the range, uh, which is the CARF 3.0. The refinement of uh, our wave and freestyle foil, that's the, the go-to foil for most of our team riders. Yep. Uh, so I was quite exciting, it's quite excited getting into that project and, and feeling the refinements that you guys did. So uh, maybe Jerome, talk us through a little bit uh, about what has been achieved. The goal was to improve the glide, the protection, the breachability. Um, exactly. So quite a few things that we wanted to improve without downgrade any, any of that, that favorite pop, uh, the freestyle, the, the jumping, uh, what our team riders love so much. Um, and yeah, I can say well achieved. I'm super stoked on the outcome. So talk us through the, the little details a little bit about what you what you've been doing together with Baldo. Yeah, sure. So um, as you said, um, what we wanted to improve was the sort of uh, performance, the wave riding performance of these foils. I think that they were already very well accepted on the freestyle side of the sport. We saw many riders even from other brands coming and buying our foil. Um, we knew that on the wave side, there was still room to improve. And uh, what we felt is that we could uh, do with a little bit more uh, drive uh, going down the wave. Sometimes we had to sort of ask for a little bit of lift, you know, like uh, we, we could feel we were missing a little bit of lift from the, the previous 2.0 generation. So what we did, uh, two sort of main changes. The most, let's say, obvious one uh, is the outline where we went for that similar sort of uh, belly in the center uh, outline that we, we did on our Glide 2.0 as well. Um, gives us a nice sort of grunty center part of the, of, the, of the wing. That's also what's kind of creating the pop for the jumps. Yeah, also a creating a really nice pop here. And then obviously a little bit less surface area as we go towards the wingtips uh, so that you can roll from uh, to, to heal very smoothly so that, you know, when you do breach the wingtip, there isn't too much coming out. Um, and uh, so that was the main change. And of course, the, the profile, we are, uh, we are now using a more cambered profile. So with a slightly higher lift to drag ratio, uh, which helps in the overall performance of the foil. And uh, then if we look from the, from the front, we can see that we've got a sort of uh, an hydral shape going into a much flatter wingtip now. Uh, the previous generation was kind of flat in the center and then would, uh, would go down toward the wing, the, towards the wingtip. Um, we found that this gives us a really nice control when you're leaning hard into a turn. That particular uh, sort of uh, curvature of the front wing mm -hmm. works really well for that. And also the, the, the flatter tips breach uh, better than the previous generation. So overall, uh, I think we're all pretty stoked about how they feel uh, underfoot. The other thing we've, uh, we've changed, we are now uh, having, for example, our 800 with a 160 stub, so a smaller stub. The previous, let's say, 850 that we had, uh, we recommended a 180 stub. We now sort of tweak the parameters so that we can ride them with a smaller stub, which again helps loosening the foil, making the turn more radical, uh, reducing the drag also. Okay, so, this yeah. stabilizer you talked about is, it looks one-to-one -one the same like the previous P, but it says PX. Yep. So that's not exactly the same stabilizer. It's not exactly the same. They are very similar, exactly the same outline, exactly the same sort of curvature and everything. Uh, the only difference is the twist. And the angle. Uh, and the angle of attack of the stabilizer. We, we've built a lot of twist. What I mean by twist is the angle of attack in the center of the stabilizer is uh, very different to the one on the tip. Mm -hmm. it's, it's twisting basically a lot more on this one. And it's just something that we've tried on our protos and we realized that suddenly <laughs> was making the, the wings a lot nicer, smoother, pitch control was better, turning was better, uh, but essentially it's very much the same wing. So that's why, you know, we kept the, the P 
uh, because it so the same power to it yeah. when you when you push to exactly. speeds and yeah it's it kind of has the same vibe same front foot pressure that you you would get from the yeah. P and everything they are just a tiny bit smaller so we used to have a 165 180 and a 200 we now have a 160 175 and 195 mm -hmm. in the px range because uh, the new front wings need a little bit less yeah. stabilizer because in general we've tweaked the new front wings to to require less uh, push from from the back um, so yeah we, we're pretty stoked about those uh, of course if you do currently own uh, a carve 2.0 i would like to to buy a px you can they work you'd probably swap uh, with the closer size so if you had a p165 you'd swap with a px160 if you had a px if you had a p180 PX 175, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Now you just showed us this um, this 800. Um, previously, we've had a 500, a 650, an 850, and then quite a step to an 1100 on yeah. the D-Lab range. Um, how does this 800 compare to the previous 850? I would say that in terms of lift, they are pretty similar. So because of the more cambered profile and because of uh, that sort of bailey in the center, it is quite a lifty wing. So if you had an 850 before and you want something similar-ish to that, the 800 is definitely a nice replacement for that. The new 650, I would say, feels a little bit bigger than the previous one, a little bit more lift, a little bit more drive. Mm -hmm. If you were using a 650 on the wave but were maybe missing a little bit of, of lift, you, you'll probably find that the new one makes quite a big jump um, when it comes to wave riding. And same, same idea for the new 500, just feels a little bit more, it just glides easier on the wave, basically. Yeah. Um, and we've added that, that 950 size in between the 1100 and the 800, because there was a bit of a gap there. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a 950, which is actually a very popular size with all the guys we've had uh, trying the foil. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the new bestseller. Yeah. It ticks okay. all the boxes. I think that's also going to be a really good seller. It's, it's a size that fits a lot of a lot of people out there. And then we still have an 1100 and a 1300. So the 1300, we again have the, the CARF 3.0 in a D-Lab version, which is the full semi-glider, this construction I'm holding here. Yeah. And then we have the SLS version, which is the bolt-on yep. that you guys know. And the SLS starts at 800. It exactly. uh, has a 950, an 1100, and a 1300. Yep. The, um, the D-Lab stops at the 1100. Exactly. Just because of we're getting to the limits of this uh, sleek design. Yep. The 1300 would need a bigger, and actually you don't feel that speed benefit in a size like that that much. Um, well, you, you just mentioned the, the sleek design. We did increase a tiny bit the, the width of the fuselage. Uh, this was always kind of a critical area. Uh, of course, some of our, our team riders, especially the heavy guys, they did manage to, you know, crack a few of the foils here. Mm. And it's something that we want to, of course, uh, uh, we want to fix. We want to make sure that there's no more breakage and everything. So if you look at the, the width of the fuselage, we beefed that up while still keeping a very nice sort of flowy section uh making sure that you know we, we're not in increasing the drag around this area and uh so far touch wood we haven't snapped any of those yet not a single <laughs> one yeah so yeah and uh so um they have quite some familiarities with the glide 2.0 as you said um which is the customer you would recommend the calf and which is the one you would say get a glide so the calf customer is going to be uh, the, the guy that likes to jump, do a bit of freestyle. Uh, if you're riding somewhere where you've got relatively powerful waves, like back home, that's all I use basically uh, in, on Manawa. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty, you know, pretty powerful ocean wave, swell. ocean swell. I don't really need all that glide, let's say from a glide wing. I'm more interested in, in the sort of the, the control that this lower aspect design gives me and allows me to go a little bit more in the critical uh, area in, on the wave. Uh, so that's the customer that will pick the car 3.0. Uh, and then maybe someone that just likes something a little bit loose under the foot, you know, because... Playful turns. Yeah, as much as 
higher spec wings like the Glide are very popular for sure. The one drawback is that you lose a little bit of that sort of direct uh, control over the foil because of the increased span. So some, some people just like riding something a little bit lower aspect ratio. Um, talking about aspect ratio, we did increase the aspect ratio slightly from the uh, 2.0 to the 3.0. From memory, I think the 850 was a 6. 0.8 maybe aspect ratio, the new 800 is a 7. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's, we, we increase slightly the aspect ratio. And um, um, of course, the other customer that will be interested by the CARV 3.0 are kite foilers. Mm -hmm. Kite foilers again have the same uh, problem that because they are leaning over a lot more than wingers, they cannot really ride front wings which have uh, a big span because you keep you know getting ventilation from the wingtips yeah so that little 500 for example works super well for kite foiling the 650 up to the 800 of course some people will even like the 1100 but let's say i would recommend personally between 500 to 800 for kite foiling um, they work really well for that i've i personally use them as well for for kite foiling and, uh, the ability to breach the tape is something that that really stood out for me in testing. Yeah, that you could uh, that this is a foil that you can really slash into turns, bring a lot of the foil out, yeah. and then recover completely without coming off foil. Mm -hmm. uh, you could even do that like front side is kind of easy, but do that on a back side slash, yeah. and bring the foil out and not come off foil, mm -hmm. which is an ability to just recover, get rid of the bubbles, and and keep foiling. It's it's insane yeah. um, in my eyes, and then. Obviously, the, the, the speed uh, that you project when you get on a turn on the wave is highly increased. Yeah. Um, you just project through the turns with a lot of control and it's just looser. Looser yeah. and roll. It's very easy and intuitive to follow your, your lines. Very instinctive to just look, look somewhere and just go there and it just follows without thinking. And it's uh, something I really like about this new foil. Yeah, and maybe something else we could talk about is a uh, mass position in the in the trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, so both the two smaller sizes, the 500 and the 650, you'll find that you're going to ride them a bit further forward in your trucks uh, while testing, uh, especially with the boys uh, Jeffrey and Finn on Maui. Uh, we found out that they they just liked the way the, those four, uh, smaller foils felt when they were when the front wing was brought a bit closer to the mast. Uh, so we've decided to go uh, that way with the smaller sizes, uh, which just means you need to push your, your, your mast a little further. Talking like a CM. A CM, a CM and a half further forward. The 800 on the other hand, which is kind of like the freestyle weapon for most of our team, we wanted something like with a strong pop so that front wing is placed a little further forward from the mast, which means you're riding your mast a little further back. Uh, Just compared to these two. <laughs> compared to these smaller sizes. Yeah. Again, it's something that we kind of tweaked based on what we were looking for. Uh, around the middle of the tracks. On the around boards. the middle, around the middle of your track, maybe a touch behind the middle uh, for, for that 800. And then the, the 950, the 1100, 1300, they are kind of in between. Like I'd say they are bang on in the center of the tracks for these other sizes. So, so all just, within small distance of... Yeah, they're all within, yeah. within, let's say, two centimeters. That one maybe yeah. a little forward, that one a little bit back, the other one's in the middle. Yeah. Uh, we've tweaked them uh, on purpose to be, to be ridden like that. Ridden on, obviously, most riders ride them with the Sky Style boards. Yep. Um, taking them to the waves. Some ride them under the Sky Bread. Sure. Um, and uh, pretty much all of them ride them with this mass. That the 84. 84, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's got the right length to be in the, in the surf, give you enough room, uh, still direct enough, not too long. Um, so yeah, there's, there's been a lot of work done yeah. on, on this mass. Talking overall combination, so we have the new front wing, uh, the new stabilizer, the new mast, all that together is a solid difference you feel. For sure. Um, then the tail pieces are the ones that we used to have. Um, what's your personal recommendation? So I kind of like the smaller one on basically all the front wings. 
so the 37 yeah because uh, i like the reactivity and uh, yeah i like how loose it makes the setup but i know that there are some guys that will prefer to go with the 43 especially when they go down to the the 500 and the 650 mm -hmm. those are pretty small wings so some people like to sort of get a bit more stability from especially the long when you go on a larger surf yeah bigger surf, things like that uh, some people might pick the the longer stub but i think for freestyling and everything we all prefer the sort of that direct feel that nice pop direct pop really the, instant repop yeah from the shorter fuse yeah um and uh yeah you were just mentioning the new 84 mast it really does sort of help bring out the full flavor of the setup uh, especially this this sort of shorter cord length that we have now on the mast really loosens the turn and yeah if if you can going for the new car 3.0 with the new mast is kind of the perfect setup really yeah but uh, obviously works on all the previous, previous, previous mast that we have mast for sure yeah yeah all right i'm personally very excited my junior is especially excited about this one he's just recently used this and says that it's so much more reactive so much better yeah. um so yeah i think a lot of our team riders are just about to receive these and i'm pretty stoked they are looking really looking forward to hear their feedback the boys will and girls will obviously ride them in the upcoming cape verde event yep. so looking forward how they are doing um maybe last few words prone foiling um, I know that Wesley and the Spencers have been quite done quite a bit of prone foiling and especially toe foiling on it yeah. and really loved, loved it for that, for that. doing tri tricks on the wave, ridiculous tricks from, from Wesley lately. Yeah. Um, so that's also a, a, a really good yeah, for foil sure. for that, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're being toned in a wave, there's yeah, nothing better than that, that calf to yeah. really go tight in the turns. Of course, it's not going to pump like a glide or like a whiz. Uh, it's going to be harder to link the waves, although Wesley and the boys are so skilled that they, they do make it work with, with the calf. But yeah, for the average guy out there, if you're wanting to be able to link waves, not really something you'll be able to do or as easily as on a glide, uh, for sure. I do want to mention, though, compared to the calf 2.0, Yep. the pumping is way better. Yeah, it has a better pumping for sure. Yep. Uh, that, that comes from this more canvas profile, uh, just a bit more lift, less drag. Uh, it pumps better, but it's still not a glide. Yeah, so, obviously. Yeah. Cool, thanks a lot, Jerome. Um, class. Really great job on these together with the team. Obviously, it's always a team effort. You have sure. always Poldo in the background with helping you with the profiles, the 100%. layups, everything is really fine-tuned and, and uh, simulated to the max. So uh there's been a lot of work on each single size yeah. so i'm really looking forward to release these and there's a lot of fans about the the calf range and uh i think that will continue with the calf 3.0 so guys if you have any more questions type them below the video uh we're going to be there for you for your for the answers and um if you like this content give us a like follow and i hope to see you one of the next uh do it on falling episodes